Uh, speaking of hang your head, I think there's going to be some heads semi hung in Columbus tonight. And I'm going to go with you, Hack. Let's go to Ohio State at Nebraska. You were talking about aside from aside from like getting stumped at home by Oregon, Ohio State's probably the hottest team in college football. Here they are on the road against an underwhelming Nebraska team. Like week one, we told Nebraska fans, don't mind the Big Ten championship. If you got something else to do, go do it. Certainly don't mind the college football playoff. Make a watch party at your home. You're not going anywhere. Make a watch party at home. Watch it. And they tangle up the Buckeyes by nine. Hack, will this affect Ohio State in this beauty pageant? Because that's basically what it is in, the, in, the, in this back yeah. street away. Or is it no big deal because at the end of the day, it was a W? Yeah, I think the the beauty of it is Ohio State still has uh, still has a few monster matchups towards the Mich end of the Michigan year. Michigan State and Michigan. Michigan and Michigan State, correct. Mm -hmm. So, um, for me, that's that's the hard part in watching Nebraska all year. I mean, if you remember, I mean, they played Oklahoma pretty tight. They Nebraska, even under Scott Frost, has never gone out and just got completely embarrassed by teams that everybody thought that they were going to go out and get embarrassed by. They beat themselves a lot. It's not a bad football team. Defensively, they got some talent. Offensively, I just think they lack a lot of consistency, especially at the quarterback position. I think Adrian Martinez is a very dynamic football player, but when it comes to being able to execute an offense in a manner that is going to lift them due to their deficiencies of not necessarily being able to go out and pull a bunch of five stars and guys that are going to run by a ton of people. I think Nebraska is in that, in that space now where it's not 1995 in the late nineties anymore. They're, they're not an attractive landing spot for a lot of kids. They're a developmental role that has a ton of funding due to the fact that they have a ton of history and a, a, a massive alumni base that loves to pour money into the football program. So, um, for me, like I said, it's it's a win. I think Ohio State still has a lot of great opportunities ahead of them, and I think Nebraska gets a really bad rap, but I think it's a very talented team that never really disappoints on the type of stage when they get these opportunities, but also never finishes it and ends up on the winning side of these things, um, at least under Scott Frost. So um, ultimately, if I'm Ohio State, you know, there's bigger fish to fry coming down the pipe and you got to buckle up for those games, but a win's a win. And I know people in Columbus are going to be upset. That's just how Ohio state is, but they've, they control their own destiny better than most people like in Oregon, for example, you know, Wyatt down there shooting the trigger. Um, they, they, they have, they have opportunities ahead, ahead of them, unlike Oregon and a few other teams. Speaking of fish to fry and a win's a win. That's the same bucket Cincinnati's in same boat. Cincinnati's in Bryce Petty, the fighting Bryce Petty's at the University of Cincinnati. The state of Ohio today, both took on lesser challenges and they both basically just like, I don't want to say survived them, but they just outlasted them. It, it wasn't a knockout. It certainly wasn't a knockout. The Bearcats needed a fourth down stop within two minutes of the game to hold off Tulsa. So here we are. And Christian just said it beautifully. It's like Ohio State does have bigger fish to fry. Cincinnati, this may be the biggest catfish they have given SMU. They got catfish, a little trout, a little trout, <laughs> another catfish, a tire. Like, <laughs> they, I know. I they, they, don't, they don't have them. anybody. They don't have anybody. And and what we what we've done for them, or what the committee has done to them, uh, is is put up a really really hard expectation. And and I don't know what a style point is. I don't know if there's actually a definition of what a style point is, other than the fact that what we have put on them is you have to beat people by fifty five points. Um, you know, in, in the world, and, and Trevor and I talk about this on our podcast, especially against, you know, in, in reference to Oklahoma, right? Oklahoma has has done nothing in terms of style points um, to, to really be in a position where they're at. Um, but what the committee showed us this week when they came out with these rankings was 
you know, Notre Dame at Notre Dame did not matter. A ranked Indiana at Indiana did not matter. Um, so you have to go and and truly, uh, you know, execute <laughs> your your dudes uh, not only while they're sleeping, but actually while they're looking at you. Um, and that's that's what's that's what's tough. Um, they're not only fighting, uh, you know, the team that's out there playing. They're fighting themselves. They're fighting the committee. I think it's just going to be too much for Cincinnati and. Um, that it is still a wee thing, but I think it's a, uh, it's, it could be a dead thing <laughs> when it comes down the stretch here. So, uh, so let's, let's go right to that. Let's go right to that. Brace throughout style points. And I'm talking to Brace, Trevor, Hack. To me, in my opinion, I'm just going to lob it up to you guys. Style points basically mean that. I would beat my opponent the way you would beat my opponent. So if I'm Cincinnati and I'm taking on Tulsa, I got to treat Tulsa the way Georgia would, Oregon, Ohio State, Bama, et cetera. If I scrape past, outlast, or get by Tulsa in 12 rounds, the other ones aren't doing that. They're going to knock these dudes out before the first round bell ends. To me, that's style points. Like, I don't know if it's like a magic number, but I have to do these dudes the way the rest of these dudes, like, like sitting in the bullpen would do them. Am I off or am I semi-close? Uh, I mean, I think when you say it, Georgia carves them up, Alabama carves them up, Ohio State carves them up. I think you could even say Michigan State carves them up. Oregon. Yeah, I think you, Oregon can, I think you can run to the up. top 12. Yeah, I mean, there's a handful of teams up. that I mean, carve them up. Right. So, that's, think, well, that, that's, what I, that's what I'm saying. It's all relative, right? Because take – okay, yeah. so take Alabama, LSU. How many – now, and we've talked about you think, this because you we think know Cincinnati that, shows up and plays LSU that time? No. no. So, what no, do you think I Cincinnati don't. would do with LSU, Bryce? Um, I think that they have to give them everything they got and, and then some, I, I, I really do. But uh, again, that's not the point, right? Because the point is that the committee as pos- probably all four of us do not see Cincinnati in that top four. But when you start looking at what the top four has done this year, um, to get in there, you've got again, an Oregon and an Ohio state with an Alabama does, if you're just looking at the top four does, Georgia carve up LSU way better than Alabama. Does a Ohio State carve up an LSU way better than Alabama or way they more? They don't they, have to. But I think, to, I think we should leave Georgia out of any of these arguments. The White Walkers are going to shut these teams out. That's the <laughs> White Walkers. Yeah. We're talking right football now. teams. We ain't talking White Walkers. Which, We're by the way, for everybody walkers. listening, we've already we've already said that, that Georgia has a bye in the playoff. They got the first and the second spot. <laughs> they should have the first and second spot. Yeah. Yeah. But, but to, to Hack's point, Bryce, we're talking everybody out of the top four. So you, so you the, really don't hold going the into the four. Gotcha. Uh, correct. So you got to get in. You have to show something to get into the club. You got to have an ID who's with you, et cetera, et cetera. I got him, him and him. Like you got to show something to get. If you're in, what's the difference? All yeah. you got to do is maintain. But if I'm Cincinnati, who else? Michigan, et cetera, et cetera. But especially Oklahoma. Cincinnati, yeah. because correct. Yeah. Cincinnati, I mean, they're they're just they're already wearing an eighty pound yeah you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah they wear a rucker sack yeah <laughs> like like versus and everybody else is getting ready for this track meet you yeah. like Trevor is that fair or is that uh, too much of a high wire actor over the top to look at Cincinnati and say you got to treat Tulsa the way everybody else above you would treat Tulsa. No, you, the way that you said that a second ago is comparing yourself to the Georgias and the Alabamas of the world and going to your opponent and, and treating them that way, that is spot on because I hate to say it, but a Cincinnati has to go in there and have those style points to even get a look. The only thing keeping them in the conversation right now is the goose egg in that L column. They are, the committee is sitting here going, SMU, 
please just beat yeah. these guys so we don't yeah. even have to yeah. worry about it. Right. You but know? on I that mean, on that somebody, point, Trevor, please. too, what's interesting, though, is you had your boys down in, in Norman at number four, and but, the yep. committee saw them the same way, though. Which yep. is interesting, but this is where it's different. Oklahoma plays in a power five conference and I know the big 12 isn't like the, you know, anything crazy, but it, it is a power five conference and that holds weight. The, the Cincinnati is ranked above them. week in and week out is, I know I get that. I'm just saying from an undefeated standpoint, right. Going back to the Cincinnati question, they unfortunately have to beat people bad We've talked about how it's really hard to win in, and, in any league at this. And level, even on right? the argument, though, too, of like what you have left coming down the coming down the the shoot towards the end of the year, that Oklahoma still has Baylor, yeah. mm -hmm. Oklahoma State, right yeah. now. Baylor took a little bit of a blip today, but still, yeah. I mean, you play, still we have, play way better at home too. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but like Oklahoma still has Oklahoma still has opportunities. Whereas yeah. Cincinnati just has to go win. That's right. it. Yeah. And they, they can't – like they, any of these wins heading down the pipe for, for Cincinnati carry no weight. We, we, talk about, we talk about, you know, the committee and all this stuff, but there's a lot of money talk going on too, right? Like sure. there's, there's money to be made in these playoff games, and viewerships, all that stuff. If you're sitting around a table and there's money stakes there – you're going, okay, Cincinnati's undefeated, but they barely beat Tulsa. Do you really think that people are going to watch the second half and all these ads that all these companies are paying for in the Probably second yeah. half when they Probably. get That's absolutely curb stopped? Right. I mean, I think there's a lot more By variables to it. And I'm probably reading too much into it. But there's probably a lot more variables to it than just what's your win-loss column and how have you looked playing, right? Well, it's like how, how, well, how well is Cincinnati going to travel? You know, even even to that point, you know what yep. I mean? I mean, how many Cincinnati fans are there out there besides Bryce Petty who's going to buy out a whole block of the Marriott? The whole suite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Y'all yeah, roll in with me. I got this. But, but just the market, you know? It's interesting. And to Hack's point, to Hack's point, they, 